Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're going to deep dive into recursive merge sort and why its time complexity is O of n log n. If you find this video helpful and you would like to see more videos like this, please take the time to like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get started. So let's visualize this merge sort function. We'll go through the code line by line. So let's imagine that we have an array that looks like this. So this array here will be our input array. So this is the array that we're going to pass to our merge sort function here. So this array is this array. So the first portion of the code here, it just checks to see if our array is greater than length one because an array of length one is already sorted. So if we get an array of length one here, we're just gonna return that array as an already sorted array. But if the array is greater than length one, then we're going to move on to this portion of the code. And this portion of the code is where the divide and conquer approach is implemented. So basically here, we're going to split our input array by getting the middle index of the array. We're going to split it into two separate arrays, which will look something like this. And these individual arrays, left array and right array, after they're split, they're going to be once again passed to the merge sort function. And once again, we end up at this portion of the code because this array and this array are individually being passed to this merge sort function. So for each of these, we end up at this portion of the code. And both of these arrays are not less than length two. We have an array of length two and we have an array of length three. So they're gonna move on to this portion of the code in which we use the divide and conquer approach once again. And let's go ahead and write that in here actually, because it's important. So once again, we're going to get the middle index of our array and create a left array and a right array by splitting the single array on its middle index. So you'll notice that this array, this array, and this array are already of length one. And as, as we've seen here, we're gonna pass these arrays of length one to merge sort. We're gonna pass these arrays in to merge sort, and then they're, they're gonna to get to this conditional, and they're less than length two. So we're just going to return these arrays. So for these arrays, we can stop. But this array here is of length two. So this array is going to get to this portion of the code again, and we're going to split it. And now, these arrays are of length one, so we can stop here as well. So these calls to merge sort are the same as these calls to merge sort, but we still haven't called merge. And what merge is going to do is, is it's going to take two already sorted arrays and it's going to merge them together into one single sorted array. And what that's going to look like is, it's going to be called here these results are going to be merged together into one sorted array. So these two sorted arrays are going to be combined and returned here as a sorted array of length two.
and the same thing will be done here. We're going to merge. And these two sorted arrays are going to be combined and returned here as a single sorted array. And we'll do the same here. Merge. And these two sorted arrays are going to be combined and returned here as a single sorted array. And last but not least, we're going to merge here. And these two sorted arrays are going to be combined and returned here as a single sorted array. And let's not forget our initial call to merge sort. So that's how we can visualize recursive merge sort, but you're probably still wondering what this merge function is actually doing. So as mentioned before, this merge function takes two already sorted arrays and it combines them together into one sorted array. And that function looks something like this. So as you can see, merge takes in a left array and a right array, both of which are sorted, and then it will return this result array which is a combination of both the left array and the right array sorted. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Now let's imagine that the arrays that we want merged look like this for the left array and this for the right array. Now keep in mind that the merge helper function merges ordered arrays, so it will not work on unordered arrays. In this example, we are merging two ordered arrays of length 3 to show the entirety of the function's functionality, but this will also work for naturally sorted arrays of length 1. So for this while loop to continue, both left index and right index need to be less than the length of their corresponding arrays. As you can see, these indexes are incremented every time that index's element is pushed to the result array. So if we draw this out, it looks something like this. Here are the two arrays and their indexes. In this next line, we check to see if the element at the left array index, which is currently 0, is less than the element at the right array index, which is also 0. So is 3 less than 1? No, so that means we do what's in our else condition, which is push the right array element at its current index to the result array and increment the right array index. And now our right array index is 1, so we can move this. And then, once again, we do our comparison at the top of the for loop. Is 3 less than 6? Yes, so we push 3 onto our result array and increment our left array index. And we can move this over as well. And back to the top of our for loop again. Is 12 less than 6? No. So we're going to use the code in our else condition, which is push the right array element 6 to the result array and increment the right index. And again, we will move this. And now, is 12 less than 15? Yes. So we push the 12 from the left array to the result array and then increment the left index as well as move this arrow to the new left index. Now is 16 less than 15? No. So we move on to our else condition and push the 15 from the right array to our result array and increment the right index by 1. Now at this point, this while loop will terminate because if you remember, this while loop will only continue if the left index is less than the left array's length and the right index is less than the right array's length. At this point, our right index is equal to the right array's length. As you've probably already noticed, there is still a 16 left in the left array that has not yet been pushed to the result array, but the while loop is already complete, so what do we do? After the while loop, we're going to add another line of code that looks like this. So this return is going to return a single array that is a combination or a concatenation of three arrays, the result array, a slice of the left array, and a slice of the right array. So this slice function, if we only pass one index to it, it will be used as the start of the slice, and will slice up until the end of the array. Let's break this down. So if you remember from the last slide, 
our result array currently looks like this. And we're going to add to it a slice from the left array starting from the left index that we incremented, which is 2, which results in an array containing only this part. And we're going to add to that a slice of the right array starting from the right index that we incremented, which is 3, which results in an empty array because index 3 would be here. And with all of those combined, the result being returned is an ordered array that looks like this. Hey, just one quick interruption. If you are finding this video helpful or it's bringing you to some type of understanding, please take the time to like and subscribe. So to understand the time complexity of merge sort, we'll take a array, an array of length 4 into consideration. So this input array will pass to the merge sort function. And what that call to merge sort will do is divide the array approximately in half. And those halves will be passed to merge sort recursively. And at this point, we have our arrays of length 1. So we can't split these arrays any further. And to understand the time complexity of merge sort, we need to understand O log n. And if you don't understand O log n, then I suggest you watch my video on O log n before continuing with this video, or you might get confused. So as we know, in computer science, O log n is the same as log base 2 n. And in this case, n is the length of our array here, which is 4. So, and the reason you need to understand log n is because this divide and conquer approach that we're implementing here is log n. That is to say that log base 2 of 4, which is our n, our n is 4, equals 2. And that's because 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, which means that for an array of length 4, there will be two levels to our recursive tree structure. And we can see that here. We have level 1, and we have level 2. So this is a level, and this is a level. And for each one of these levels, what we need to do is we need to touch every element of n because we need to sort them. And in order to sort them, if you remember from our illustration of merge, within this merge function, the while loop within this merge function needs to touch each element to compare the elements and create the merged array. So that means that for each level, we need to merge. And this merge function needs to touch every element of n. So that means that each level is actually O of n. And there are log n levels. So O of n times log n really just means O of 4, because 4 is our n. n is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 is our n times log base 2 of 4. And as we've seen here, log base 2 of 4 is actually just 2 times 4. So the number of elements in the array and the number of levels that we need to traverse. So for every level, we need to touch n elements in the array, 
which is 2 times 4. And that's why merge sort has a complexity of of in log in.